extremely destructive. Major damage, quickly. Uh, the, the damage is immediate. Just pieces of sod everywhere. Chewed up, churned up. Just tunnel up an entire area overnight. You know, they damage the property. We're seeing a huge amount of destruction. Well, certainly from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, one of the biggest challenges we have to conserving our state's native fish and wildlife is this proliferation of exotic and invasive species. And at the top of the list are feral hogs. They've become a huge problem for our state. You know, they're found in almost every county. Uh, you know, we estimate that they're causing upwards of a billion and a half dollars a year across the country. Uh, but make no, no mistake, you know, this is not a rural problem. Um, this is a problem as much in Fort Worth as it is in Fort Davis or Fort McCabot. So communities all across the state are having to contend with the proliferation of feral hogs in communities, big and small. And so we're seeing a huge amount of destruction to property, backyards, golf courses, city and county and regional parks. Um, and so communities are really struggling with how do we contain these species and what are viable control mechanisms. One of the first instances I heard about with, uh, with urban wild pigs was, was, in, was in Fort Worth. And it struck me at that time, well, uh, we've seen these things pop up in enough places that the numbers outside in the rural areas are, are really expanding, they're really growing. And so it's only natural for uh, an opportunistic species like this to start spreading into, into developed areas. Short order after that, you started seeing them popping up in Houston and San Antonio and Charlotte, North Carolina, places out in California and in Hawaii. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing that, again, that was, Fort Worth was just the tip of the iceberg and it just it was almost a domino effect. It just, they just started popping up everywhere. They hit us pretty hard for about two or three weeks. Flood came, they left. I assume that's why they left. We have a couple of areas that we have seen evidence of their activity and had a few hog sightings. We do have feral hogs here. Uh, we're on a 120 acre site owned by the city of Dallas and we're right next to a 6,000 acre forest. Hogs are present here. We, we have on occasion seen them. A pack as large as, as 20 individuals in our, in our parking area. We, we spotted them about two months ago. Just this morning, we noticed damage right here in our picnic area. It's just off to my left here. You can see um, some of the damage there in between the picnic tables. Using greenways or, or drainage corridors, they, they work their way into developed areas. They've been very happy to, to uh, set up home in, in these developed areas. Unfortunately, uh, for us, that's become a major problem because they, they cause vehicle collisions, they, they do damage to our properties, they, they, we've even had attacks on people in, in developed areas. So uh, as, as negative and invasive species as wild pigs are, uh, as they've come into these developed areas, they've brought all those impacts with them. It, it seems like to me every town has a different way of dealing with feral hogs. It may be that one town does animal control, another one may use their sheriff deputies. So it, it kind of depends on where you're at and you have to know who to call to try and figure that out. And that's, that's really one of the biggest problems right now with urban feral hogs. Very important for the city departments themselves to have to organize their plan before they even go out to step with somebody else. Make sure the one department's not interfering with another. What I mean is like you have a department of sanitation because they have a landfill operation. They may be dealing with hogs in that situation at the landfills, unbeknownst to somebody else in another department is dealing with feral hogs that are, that are up and down, uh, say, a, a park system. So you've got your parks officials uh, involved in that, and then you could have your, your environmental people uh, could be dealing with homeowners, or homeowners are having a problem. So you could have three or more departments involved in dealing with, with wild hogs, and they may not all know that they're dealing with stuff. So uh, that's where the management comes in. That's coordination through, through your city manager's office with the other departments. So you can have a united effort and then present to your councils uh, uh, what, what you need to do because it's not going to be cheap. Communities are really struggling with how do we contain these species and what are viable control mechanisms. I really am not sure what all um, is 
involved in coordinating with and contracting or whatever we need to do with, with professionals and what number of professionals we would need to address the, the hazard. Right now, we don't have that that uh, silver bullet in our toolbox in general to, to take care of this problem. And when you add the complications of those animals being in suburban and urban areas, that complicates it even further. Normally in urban communities, I'm, I'm sure most people have already encountered this, there are quite a few limitations as far as you can't fire a firearm in the city limits. Also in a lot of the HOAs, you can't set up traps or fences in the front yard. So th those are going to be some of the large limitations in an urban setting, I believe, for doing feral hog control. We tried trapping them and that didn't work. We have uh, been monitoring their activity and we'll continue to do the monitoring. When we first started to get damage on our athletic fields, we purchased a trap and have had that set in the area. So we haven't caught anything in the trap at this point, but, uh, but we have the trap available and, and if our monitoring shows more activity, we'll be resetting it. Their numbers don't just increase steadily, but populations can explode and a contained issue can very quickly become something that is unmanageable or not easily manageable. 120 individuals were moved, and I'll tell you, we did notice quite a bit less damage, less sightings. We saw a significant decrease in the, uh, the presence of feral hogs here on the property. And then after a six month time period, we started to see the return. As far as what I know about their reproductive rates, I think that uh, something has to be done. They have to be controlled and removed regularly uh, just to keep up with that reproductive rate. I think the HSUS has an evolving policy because we're learning a lot from our properties and dealing with hogs. But we basically recognize that feral pigs, wild pigs, are a very difficult species to deal with. Um, there's no one solution. Lethal control isn't the sole answer. Exclusion isn't the sole answer. Um, you need to have a multidisciplinary uh, program, just like we do here on Black Beauty, where we've changed feeding structure, we've changed exclusion fencing, we've changed times of feeding, and we're learning from the pigs. We're watching how they react to what we do and then trying to make uh, coexistence, if at all possible. I think the animals do move around quite a bit. They move to where there's moisture. It seems like we see their evidence much more so after a rain when the ground is soft. If one city's going alone and they go after the hogs in their area, the hogs just move. So what they've done is just move the problem from say uh, Carrollton to uh, uh, maybe Louisville or from you know Irving to Farmers Branch. They just cross the river. I think if everybody was able to come together and come to one conclusion as to who is going to be the go-to to control hogs in this area would probably be the best outcome. Well, I think a regional approach is going to be the most effective. We, we are in communication with our neighboring cities and know that they've had more uh, problems than we have, but, uh, but since these populations will move in and out, uh, I think it's very helpful for us to have a solution that uh, that we're all committed to work together. And to address them regionally is, I think, an important, an important matter. No single agency can handle this by themselves. This is one of those issues that really necessitates communities coming together with private landowners, private businesses, homeowners, agencies like the Department of Agriculture, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, USDA, and others to help affect real solutions that will help control this species across its entire range. So we're excited with, about the discussion, we're excited about the urban discussion because urban managers are going to have to deal with this at some point and this is an issue that um, it takes a task force. It's not three individuals at a table that says this will work, this is what we do. They need to involve uh, pig lovers, pig haters and the entire community and have a good dialogue of what's ex what community standards are acceptable. I guess the one piece of advice I could give just about anybody on this, whether you're dealing with uh, developed areas or, or uh, rural areas, is to take this problem seriously. Uh, a lot of people look at it and go, pigs, really? Uh, but this is something that's, you know, don't turn a blind eye to this. These things are very destructive. They can cause a lot of problems. Uh, 
not only property damage, but uh, perhaps even uh, personal injury. We've seen fatalities now in, in wild pig vehicle collisions. So, so don't wait if they show up. You need to get in there and act as, as soon as possible to, to try to get the situation under control. Thank you.